Hi, my name is Rona Chan and I'm a recently graduated high school student. Today I'm at the Powerhouse Museum and I'm about to interview a radio astronomer, Dr Lisa Harvey-Smith, who works for the CSIRO. What do you do as a radio astronomer? Well, you know optical astronomers, right? Looking through a telescope. Like normal, normal yeah, ones? Yeah, normal astronomy, yeah. looking up through a telescope and taking a picture of the stars and people have yeah. been doing that for 400 years now. Yeah. Um, but about 100 years ago, mm -hmm. people realised, by accident actually, mm -hmm. that space emits radio waves as well. And we can't tune it in like a normal radio and hear music or anything like that. But what we can do is, is point a radio telescope, which is just like a radio aerial. Right. And we can use electronics to amplify the waves because they're very, very weak. Mm -hmm. And we can make pictures of space. And you look up in radio uh, waves and you can see galaxies and stars and planets just the same as you can with light. Right. So I, as a radio astronomer, study uh, the universe and try and understand it using radio telescopes. So how did you want to become a radio astronomer? I know as a child I wanted to become an astronaut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you still can. I still can? Yeah. Do I still learn Russian? Uh, no. No. No? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> so I always wanted to be an astronaut as well. Actually, I did apply to be an astronaut. Um, oh, but, you wow. know, they picked test pilots and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, but astronomy was always something I was interested in. I thought it was cool, and it is cool. Yeah. I looked up at the night sky and I thought, that's pretty nice. Yeah. And then I saw some planets and I looked through a telescope and saw the planet Saturn. That's the one with the rings around it. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, it's, um, it just fascinated me. And I thought, what a great career to, you know, do research, be like someone like Isaac Newton. I imagined it would be, <laughs> yeah. you know, very sort of romantic ideas. But, you know, it's quite an exciting career. Yeah. You know, I've worked in the UK, the Netherlands, and also in Australia. Yeah. And uh, a lot of astronomers work at least three or four countries in their yeah. life. And they also travel extensively to countries. I went to China last year on a scientific visit right. and worked with Chinese collaborators there. I've worked in the US, in Canada. I've been to everywhere, <laughs> everywhere in Europe. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been to South Africa. So, you know, there's a lot of collaborations around the world. There's a lot of travel. It's a very mm. interesting and um, exciting field to be in. The universe is big. Right. You know, it's not yeah. going to dry up anytime soon. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So um, you talked about Galileo. Yeah. So I've yeah. heard of lots of astronomers, Galileo, Newton, Kepler. They're all male. Yeah. So is... Yeah. Well, in those days, yeah. um, men got all the credit. You know, sometimes oh. there are a lot of women behind the scenes doing the work, but the way society was um, built up in the past mm. was that um, it was the men who would be the prominent authors of right. things. You know, um, William Herschel was a famous astronomer in, in England, right. and uh, he got some, some uh, he made some discoveries like uh, the planet Uranus. Oh. Um, but in fact, his sister Caroline worked closely with him and oh. discovered a lot of stuff, but she got no credit at the time because it was just traditional that oh. women didn't get credit for things. But right. In fact, there's a lot of uh, famous women astronomy through history. Mm -hmm. So is this becoming like a growing field for women? Um, it's, it's interesting because a lot of women are going into universities and doing science yeah. education. Girls are doing great in, in school and university. Um, and you know, it's really just people pushing through their interests and getting into the field, you, you see a lot more women nowadays working in the field. Uh, some of the top women professors uh, who've made great discoveries, including Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell. Yeah. Uh, she discovered pulsars, and there's ah. lots of other uh, examples too, uh, people with Nobel Prizes. Uh, but you know, our society's still um, designed in a certain way, and yeah. I think there are things we need to do to make sure women and girls feel confident to go into science as, as they do in other technological yeah. careers. So, so, I read your website last night. Yeah. <laughs> I read about your secret ambition. Could you tell ah, us a little bit yeah. about that? No, um, I, I do have a secret ambition. I do want to be an astronaut. I'd love to, yeah. <laughs> to put a, a telescope on the moon. You know, the, the moon's quite interesting because, have you ever noticed, um, it always looks the same. Even though it goes crescent, half, full, and new, mm. the little features on the front of the moon look the oh, same. Right, They're always yeah. facing us. Yeah. And the moon's obviously a, a, a ball yeah. shape, so it actually orbits like this. It always faces the same side to us. Right. So the dark side of the moon, we will never <laughs> see. And we could put telescopes on it, so I think that would be a great right. place, because it would shield us from a lot of in interference from the Earth. Right. Um, so I, I think uh, that would be quite a nice little day trip to, uh, Project. to the moon. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for talking to us today, Lisa. Yeah, you're welcome.